And so I wanted his input. And I want to know from you what you're doing to prepare for winter. And then with all of us working together, we're going to, before the end of class, we're going to know the best possible things we could do or should have done to have be had successful wintering. Okay, John? That's what you do. What I do, I start closing things up in the middle of July, is what I do. I do mic checks to make sure my mic loads are down, and I make sure there's plenty of food on the hot end. And I watch this all the way up until the temperature drops. And it hasn't dropped yet, so I'm still out there. The other thing I don't do is, is like, right now, I don't put syrup on. I put uh, like a sugar patty I make up or an old winter patty. Because if you put syrup on, you end up freezing your bees out and too much moisture in the hive. So that's what I do. Well, if you was, if you was using syrup, okay, and you had some light hive and you were using syrup, you definitely would probably want the thickest syrup that you could put on them. And you know, we're talking about feeding that what in August and September. Yeah, if you if you use two to one sugar syrup mixture, you make up. What they all end up doing is eating it because there's nothing in the hive anyway. If your hives are light, if you use tight 55 corn syrup, right? Mm -hmm. It's thick enough, it's heavy enough, and they'll end up packing that away instead of eating all of it. So keep that in mind also late in the early your feed. Okay, um, corn syrup is a fructose, okay, like honey. And sugar is a sucrose, and it's more of a stimulant. So if you're trying to feed your bees to build up to, uh, to stimulate brood berry, you would use sucrose. Right. But if you're trying to get stores in your hive, you can use sugar syrup. But what he is saying, the fructose bees, they just store like honey. So if you're feeding high fructose 55 later in the season, they're just gonna store it in the combs. They're not gonna stimulate. Now, why wouldn't you wanna stimulate a little bit of brood bearing in late summer? Well, you, you would. You would. For your, your winter bees to carry you through. That's not a problem, but when you get to this time of year right now, and you still got warm temperatures, and you're still trying to feed the bees, there's nothing out there for them to work basically right mm -hmm. now. If you just keep putting sugar syrup on that I found out, they won't store it. They'll just, they'll just continue to eat it and keep going. And But they won't make any brood or anything, but they'll continue to eat the sugar syrup or if the temperature drops, like mm -hmm. I said before, moisture gets in the hive and you end up with a dead hive, basically. That's what I find. That's what you're so, yeah, and the other so, thing you need to tell them is with the corn syrup, there's a certain type that you don't feed them, correct? That's correct. Which one is it? I, you have two types of corn syrup. You have high fructose 55, and then you have 42. One of them's made with an acid base. Well, right? and it's how it's it's all corn syrup, but it's how it's being produced, how right. they, they refine it. And the 42, is hard on the bees' stomachs. So you don't want to use high fructose 42. Oh. You want to make sure it's 55. How do you feed them? Um, you just bucket feed them, or you can top feed them. The thing you're doing on feeding bees, if you got bees, okay, let's say we got a hive, there's no honey in here. And it's um, August, September, and they have no honey you need to get stores in there. So the different feeding systems that you can use on bees are, one, an inside feeder, which is a boredom feeder, which I don't recommend. I use them because I, they're in migratory hive. You have those where it's just a cavity where you pour the feed in, okay? Um, they don't have a float system, but now there's some, they're black plastic, they got a wooden thing, they got ladders on, they go down there pretty good. If I was a hobby beekeeper, I would, I would check on the other two types of feeders are a top feeder, which that is just a tray where you put the feed in, you pour it in there, there's kind of a float system where the bees come over screen. If you need to get bee feed into your bees quickly in a larger amount, 
top feeders or open feeding on in the hive is the best way to get the weight in there fast. Corn syrup is so thick. I mean. They, I, I, the corn syrup that I've been feeding, of course those bees are going to California, so I can, I can feed them. I, I add, I get the corn syrup and I add just a small amount of water. But you gotta remember, if you're feeding bees go into winter, what kind of nutritional values in water? None. <clears throat> None. Why are you even giving them any water? They don't need water. They need a sugar content or a fruit fructose. So if you use a top feeder, then you can get, you know, you can put a gallon in and they'll empty it faster, is the reason you use that kind of feeding system. If you use a bucket, if you bucket feed them, which I do a lot, and that's some I do in the winter with the bucket. It's just whatever kind of sealed container you can get. You know, I've got two gallon buckets. I've got one gallon buckets and only got five little small holes. You can feed with that, and they're a good feeder because I've never seen a bee drown in a bucket no. with a sealed lid, right. but they can't get the feed out as fast. You see what I mean? So where if you gotta get a hive that's light, get weight on it, if you use a bucket to feed it, or a top feeder, it's gonna take you twice or three times as long to get the weight in where the bees need. With a, a top feeder, you know, every time it gets empty, you can just pour feed in. In a bucket, they, they do it take a lot. Top um, feeder for light. Mm -hmm. Top feeder for the light, for buckets for not, and we're talking about winter bees. So if you come through a, a year where you have no late flows, you know, the, the this year the summer flow stopped uh, in July. The bees that go through the winter are a different kind of bee than the bees that work during the summer. So in order to give you a chance for winter survival in your hive, you've got to have young winter bees. So those bees are raised by the queen or laid by the queen in late summer and fall. Okay, if you have a year of no honey production, do queens lay eggs and bees when they, they don't have enough food in there to feed the hive? They need some kind of stimulation. So if you've got a, late, a light hive or a new hive that's not built up, you would feed it sucrose later in the summer, early fall, to stimulate brood rearing if there's a no food coming in, so you can get those winter bees. So would that be like a late swarm? A late swarm. Yeah, a, a late swarm. I mean, you got and all those things. You know, you gotta you gotta take the mindset is what what is this hive? Because if it was a spring package or a spring nuke, it needs different care than an overwintered hive that you've got that's had stored. If this swarm came out in May and it's got a chance to work summer flowers, then there's not as much care maybe needed for that. But a late swarm. You know, if you don't help it, and you think they're going to survive, I probably not. So, the management of how you do that. So that's why the feeding part of it. And like John said, if you think about it, if you feed them, if you try to, if you're waiting until right now to start feeding your bees because they're light, tough. And you're using water in your meat, in your in your feed, if it's not super thick or honey light. What do bees do with nectar <clears throat> to make it in the honey? Evaporate water. So if we don't have the weather for them to evaporate that moisture from that feed, then you're gonna have more moisture in your hive. So when the temperature variates, you're gonna get condensation and more water. So that's the reason he's saying you don't wanna use liquid feed going into late fall because you're just adding water and that's where you would want to use a candy pour type feeding system. Right. But I do think it's totally different from that. Well, that's <laughs> what we use the candy pour, but Okay, but right. we want to hear about that. Yeah. So what we've learned here is we got to start preparing our bees when they need to start getting ready for winter. Whether that be at the end of July, if you harvest your honey and you went back and there was no weight in your colony, do you count on a fall flow? I try to. I know, but do you count on no. a fall flow? No. <laughs> so you can't say, just like I hear people talk, I'm gonna pull my honey off at the end of July, I just heard it today. 
I'm going to take the honey off at the end of July, and then those bees can have everything that's left. That is a good practice, but you're not guaranteed they're going to make anything. So you've got to check your hives if they're like. Right. So we're going to feed, and we get into July, we're not going to count, because the, the main honey flows are, depending on north to south, start in April, they run through May, you have April, and then you have May, and then your clover flows, they come in June, and in July you have basswoods and... Um, soybeans possibly, or some other clovers, late blooming clovers that are in July. So when you get to August, the only thing that you got a chance to make honey on is soybeans, or in September you have goldenrods and ashes, besides other wildflower blooms. So it is crucial upon August, if you're not heavy, to, to make a winter decision in August. And that's where you would be using liquid feed to add weight and to stimulate brood rearing for your winter right, rain. Correct. correct. So on the temperature okay. level too, you need to add that also. Right. If you're the below 50 degrees yeah. at night, you're, you're taking a risk okay. also. Now, I've heard this too, and I don't know if you all have, but <coughs> if we did the feeding, we're thinking about right now, there's no more liquid feeding. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay, but I've got a hive that's light, and I've heard that sticky, or uh, not sticky boards, um, candy board. When do you put on a candy board? You could put it on then, or... You could put it on now? Yeah, you could, but... What I do is, if, if I got a super that I held back, I would put it on. <laughs> the super of honey. Yeah. yeah. I would put it on before I'd put that candy board on, but... It, not everybody's got that luxury. But another thing that you can also do, if you don't know how to make a candy board, and you don't want to add water to your hive, why couldn't I just, on top of the air cover, just pour out a bag of sugar on it? Couldn't I do that? Yeah, you could do that, but I've never really had much luck with that. I usually, as long as I know moisture, as long as I know it's gonna draw moisture. Yeah, the honey up there, maybe a little bit, but I mean, it's above the inner cover. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Draw moisture. But he's kind of making its own candy board. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, could you not do that? And what is the benefit from using a dry feed as to using a a, 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 a liquid feed? Well, it keeps the moisture out of the hive for one. For okay. And if you got ten hives there, and you feed them dry feed instead of liquid feed, what what other problems could you eliminate? Robbie. Maybe. If you <laughs> spill syrup, if you got syrup, you're not going to have robbing, but... Okay. Could you not eliminate that? To an extent, it, to an it extent? would be a less, less problem with a less, sugar. A less. And now, could you not only, if, if it's light, and we got into February, when do, bees, when do bees use most of their food over the winter? Does anybody know? Before, before spring. <laughs> before spring. <laughs> Starting in late January, into February, and into March. Now, why are they using more food during this time than in like December or January when it's it even cold? Huh? Why, why are they eating more? It keeps laying. There you go. So, you know, if you don't prepare your hive and get ready with some weight going into winter, I mean, what are you going to do in late January or February? They're not going to make it, are they? You're going to have to supplemental feed then, correct? Yeah. So how much how much food does it take to frame to raise a frame of bees? Anybody know that? And this is no quiz. <laughs> it, it takes a frame of honey to raise a frame of bees. So it's crucial that... Now we've messed up here. We were late getting our bees ready for winter, right. so they're like going into winter. Correct. Now we're getting to February. What are we going to do? Feed. Feed. And how are we going to feed? Candy board. Yeah. You could. Can I bucket feed in, in February? Yes, you can. Okay. So now 
we're later in the winter, so the moisture problem, we're worried about starvation now, and we're not worried about that first January and all that cold and the condensation. Now we're coming out of it, so maybe the moisture wouldn't be as big of a problem. Right. So now we're going to do some feeding <clears throat> with liquid feed. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? Yes. Liquid feed, dry feed, canning boards, you liquid ratio? feed. Yeah. Feed them one to one ratio. Huh? Feed them one to one. When? In, in February. February. Yeah, if, if, if you're feeding them what? Late, what, late February or early February? Early February. Oh, no. Well, you gotta, no. You gotta still stick with the other. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta feed them thick sugar syrup. Yeah. Okay, now I'm taking you somewhere else. We're, we fed some corn syrup, and people are gonna tell you corn syrup is deadly to bees. I, 42 is deadly to bees. 55, why do they tell us that? Because it's from neonic treated corn. And corn syrup kills, you know, in pop. But I'm telling you, I've used it for years, okay? So they can tell you it kills them, and maybe it kills some, but I mean, I've used it. Type so, 55. Type 55. Now, where do you get 55? Does it say on the label? Mm -hmm. Yes, it says on the label. And, and you can buy it at mm -hmm. a baking store. They use corn syrups. Okay. You, corn the food supply. Store. you can say, Dave, I need a 55 gallon drum of corn syrup. Do you can do that. I got it. You know, if you can't find it anywhere else. But if you don't have corn syrup, you can use sugar syrup. Okay? Use what? Sugar. Okay. Okay. If you can't find them, don't worry about it. Feed something. <laughs> yeah, sure, Feed sure. something. So now we're into February. Now we're, we're, we're key because now the bees are really going to start using stores. Not only to heat, but to raise young. So if it's warm enough, you could have a candy board on there, correct? Yeah. You could do Dave's dumb, cheap candy board easy way and just dump a bag of sugar up again on the inner cover if you're not for sure if they got enough food because if they're healthy there's enough moisture during this time in that hive from condensation because people will tell you they need sh they need moisture to break down sugar so they think they got to fly out there to get it out of the pond that's frozen nothing there's condensation they can they've got water if you don't know dump sugar on it, you know. If the bees don't need it, they don't need it. But if you're feeding sugar syrup, and I've done this in February, you take a, a, a syllable plastic bucket. I, I use one gallon. I got. I use two gallon if I'm uh, <coughs> an hour drive this way. Why would I use two gallon? Yeah, I only got back bucket. there half as much time, right? So, you know, it's a smart thing for making money. You gotta have a good sealed container. And when you do that, how many holes do you think you would put in the lid of that sealed container? Well, I would think, well, there's thousands of bees in there. I need at least 150 of them. Wrong. <laughs> you only need five small holes, okay? Because in the winter, there's the barometer changes and things expand and contract and things can get pushed out. So I use five small holes. And those can be used with, a, I'm talking about something, a teeny tiny little finish nail, if you don't have a drill that you can take that. But I'm not talking about a big hole, like the end of that, no bigger than the end of that ballpoint pen. I'm talking about small holes. I'm talking about something not much bigger than this paper clip. Why, you know, why wouldn't I put Big holes in the bucket. It drips out. Brahmers, yep. you know, it pushes out. So you can't use big holes. You know, I've seen feeder buckets that you can buy. It's got a cloth thing in there or some mm -hmm. kind of deal. I don't drown like them. It'll drown them. Yeah, you kill them. So you have five small holes in that bucket. And we're talking in February. Now, when you're feeding your hive of bees and when you're overwintering your hive of bees, what position do you want to have? As far as level, does anybody know? Of the hives? Yeah. The hives are at an angle so the condensation runs down. So you would have the front down. Front down. Front down. 
the back end higher. And it don't have to be a large extreme, you know, just a slight break. Mm -hmm. And that's for if somehow moisture gets in your hive or creates moisture, it can run out. Okay? Now... The, the whole hive or just the cover? The, well, the whole hive. If you, if you tilted the lid, what would you be doing then? You're adding ventilation, correct? Mm -hmm. So just the whole hive. Okay. So now anything that runs out of anything or runs into anything right. will get out of the hive. It don't sit there with the tilt back this way. What happens then? Everything goes this way, could plug up to it. So that's number one, tilt forward. And when you're feeding, with a bucket on top of the hive, you have an air cover, which has a hole. What do I do with my briefcase? I had all my problems there. It's right there. It's there. Okay. I'm gonna draw some fancy pictures for my scooters. Go ahead. <laughs> There's my bow I did. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. I hope I know. You love me. Okay. So we got a hive, right? And it's tilted forward, sloping down with the front entrance, right? Now we're gonna feed with a bucket in the inner covers. Everybody run telescoping cover with an inner cover. Everybody, nobody using migratory lids. Very good. Just migratory lids are only good for moving bees. Okay. So under here. Now you've got a bucket that's got five small holes, and I don't care where you put them. You can put them on one corner. You can put them in the middle. But if you're going to bucket feed on them bees in the winter, the bucket will go over this hole, okay? And you're going to have a stick, a piece of wood. Because what I want, I want to set that bucket on there, and why would I want something underneath that bucket? Well, B space is one, but you know, if I set it flat, nothing could get out. And ventilation, you couldn't have any air, right? So, and if you had a little spill, they couldn't get out to clean it. So basically, it's for ventilation. I don't want to shut down their air movement in the hive because it's important, even though it's cold. Now, where would these, when I set the bucket over there, I put it on a stick, where do I put the holes? Do I put the holes directly over that hole? Or do I put them on the back side or the front side when the hive is going forward? So I'm gonna put it on here and the hole's right here. Do I put it there or do I have it set back here or do I have it forward? This forward. One. Are the holes over the, I mean the whole bucket's covering this up, but I got a stick. The holes in the bucket, are they over the, directly over the top of that hole or are they forward? They're forward. Why? Because the hive is slamming. And if it runs out, and if it runs out, it's not going to run down, run down there on your bees. And then what would happen? If cold syrup ran out into a cool hive and it got colder, what Chill would happen? Them. It'd freeze them. It'd kill them. So that's the reason we do that. Okay? So we know how to bucket feed in January. And people are going to tell you you don't need to feed bees. You all understand that you need a brood chamber to set. Oh, yeah. To put that bucket in. Yeah. You just don't take your little. Don't old ever throw your, your old equipment away. You got that old piece of crap brood chamber that was the wrong <coughs> size. You put that above the inner cover over your bucket and then put your lid back on. So then you don't have the winter elements blowing in and howling underneath that. And even if you have, if you don't have one, you know what you do? You take them combs out of your honey super that you had and you lay them in a nice dry place and you take that shell out because you don't need it in the, sun, in the wintertime, do you? And you use that. I'm curious about the bucket feeding. You said at one point you put the holes in the lid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you turn it upside down. Mm -hmm. Is right. that what mm -hmm. I'm hearing? Yeah, I'm sure it's done. Make sure it equalizes and so it, it's not you know, if it's, out, it'll eventually it, it'll drip out. Vacuum. It'll drip out till it creates its yeah. vacuum and then it'll stop. And then the bees will come up there and suck it right out of those holes. Okay. 
Why not put it in the bottom of the bucket? The holes at the bottom of the bucket. Well, I guess you could, but when I fill them, I gotta haul them out to the bee yard, so I'd have to just carry them upside down all the time, and I like to pick them up by the handle. Okay. Okay. That's the only reason. The bottom's yeah, probably thicker. It's inside there. Yeah, that's the only reason. You don't, you don't I mean, if you're only using them for either. feeding and it's your one hive at your house, you can use it anywhere. I just like to be able to carry a lift on the handle. And Makes so sense. That's the only reason. How many of you keep cottage cheese cartons in the lids? You guys keep them? I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> huh? If you keep them, you can take four of them, 16 ounces on sticks, and set them on the inside of the inner cover. The same theory he's telling you, upside down. And then those act as feeders too. So you got feeders on hand if you utilize them. You can go to Walmart or Marsh or Kroger Anywhere. or wherever and get the bigger buckets Anywhere. from the delis. Yeah. yeah this is mentioned that the, the icing buckets from the delis are yeah, excellent. Are great. Food grade, and they're, they're Food almost grade all of them have got a, a nice gasket in the top you of the lid. You don't have to buy the most expensive feeder. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm as cheap as they come. Or not cheap, they told me. Smart. Frugal. Frugal. Is a frugal, <laughs> but I'm still cheap. Okay, but that's what you got to do because this thing's expensive. And if you can get a bucket for a quarter, why spend five dollars on a bucket? Makes sense to me. So yes, sir. I was just wondering, you, you can't use the top feeders in the winter at all. No, see, that's the reason we're having to go back to the buckets. Top feeders aren't going to work when it's cold, and why? Just gets too thick or something. No, the bees are clustered. Oh, yeah. they can't get out. And what happens if a bee can't move good and falls into cold feed? Yeah, it dies. So top feeders are only to be used for spring stimulant. When the bees can fly, you use top <coughs> feeders. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the late fall, you can use you can use inside feeders when it's 40 degrees and bees aren't flying. As long as that feeding system's in the hive. And the bees, you know, can move to get to it. <laughs> so you can't use them. That's why I also say don't buy 12 different kinds of feeders for one hive of bees. You know, if buckets, you know, just use buckets. But if you got, the, the big thing is if you have no stores in your hive and you're going anywhere, you got to find a way to do it. And, you know, I've never tried it, but, you know, you could just leave the lid off your feeder bucket, put it above your inner cover. If you want to be more cheap or frugal than I am, <laughs> leave your lid off, put a float system in there, and have a ladder to come up if it's sealed inside the hive in a brew chamber. Then they can just come out of the hole, run up the side of the bucket, bucket and fill up and go back down. And they could, you know, that's a top feeder. But it's still got to be warm enough that they can it's break still away be and get warm up there. Enough that they can do. You need to, we need to go back to July, though. And I'm the ready. Thing, the one thing you need to do is is make sure you put pollen patties in that hive because what I'm finding out in my area, I don't know what they used, what they sprayed on the crops, or what they did to the crops, but I'm finding where they're dropping the pollen on the bottom of the bottom board. And they're eating up the pollen patty. Now, I don't know. I don't think those pollen patties are a lot better than that pollen, but no. something something's not going on. It's going on right with what what they're planting these days. And this this year, it's uh, it's happened to me pretty bad. So, but, but the that... good thing is to put it in July and August. Make sure you put pollen patties on that hive, and it just gives them a better chance of making brood. And go up and get into the so winter. you're just stimulating with the pollen patties, but um, just in case you're not to get. But if you're in a good area, yeah, if you're in a good area, you, that's you a got plenty story. of bee pasture. You, that's not necessary, would it be? No. Would, you, would you put pollen patties on in the jet, late January, February when she starts laying? No. They should have bee bread in there. And learning. you don't really need pollen patties in early spring because that's when the most abundance of the good pollen is. Well, I'm talking January, February. Yeah. No, you, you don't want to break cluster any time during right. winter to add any, any right. pollen substitute. What he's saying is a late summer when there's maybe not a good bloom in your area, you may use some pollen substitutes and pollen patties and liquid feed they are just something to help. They are not 
the real McCoy. You can stimulate with sugar syrup and you can stimulate with pollen patty, but it's not the health and the diet that they really need to be prosperous, okay? You can try to build hive, but you're not gonna really get everything going in the hive run, top notch and healthy unless you got the real McCoy, right? right? The, the bees so know what the best the thing is. The supplements are just what they are, supplements. I use them. I don't put any pollen patties in my stationary hive. I do use pollen patties in my stuff that I send to California. And that is because they're not going to go through winter. I give that so they got something to eat on. They can raise some brood. Yeah. And then also they got something to go to California on to eat on when they're out there and it's 60, 70 degrees and it hasn't rained for a year and a half. You know? So I got to do that. So you should get an abundance of spring pollen. And if you're in any place that's got good fall flower or fall bloom, you should get abundance of that. But when he's talking August to September, yeah, when see everything got cold then it's all and agriculture. They didn't fly and they, they And you're flying. trying to build yeah. something. What what I the reason I'm asking this is because I read or heard or something that you should put pollen patties in when the queen starts laying in late winter, very early spring, whatever you want to call it, late January, February, mm -hmm. that you should have pollen patties in then. <clears throat> when she starts laying to what? Yeah. To just provide food? Protein? Protein, Protein. right. Well, <clears throat> well, if you ever look in a beehive, where do they store the pollen? Close to the brood. A lot of it is, but where is the other pollen? Oh, That's see. the close to the brood. There's a lot of pollen, but where else do they store? It's in the bottom. It's below them. There's a lot of pollen down there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you ever lose a hive, you want to look and see what caused it. So, if you look, you ran these bees, and it died, and you cleaned it out this spring, and you took the top super off, there was a little bit of pollen around the rings where the brood used to be, and that's all. But then you got into the bottom super and you seen all this bee bread. Did at any time you think those bees needed pollen patty? No. 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 But how do you know? You don't know until you, you look and see. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you got into your hive and there was no pollen, then that's something you always want to remember that maybe I need to use some pollen substitute. But a lot of my yards... If I'm making up late nukes and winter nukes, you know, I kind of help them with that. But if it's a good established colony, other than the time John is staying, I, you have no need for pollen patty. Yeah, well, yeah, but it was just such a wacky year yeah, this year. Yeah, exactly. Was, well, that's a good example of it. And then you're talking about open a hive up. The rule of thumb I always go by is that if it's 55 degrees at night, then I'm okay to get in that hive, but I make sure it's going like that for two weeks before I even mm -hmm. decide to even get in that colony. Because most of the time I'll just walk past them and if they're out flying and doing their thing and I can see them going in and out, I won't bother them for, until I know that two week period is up. But you you can always get caught with your pants down as they say, because the temperature could drop because we live in Indiana. But yeah. once they get that going and that temperature's up, she starts making, you know, brood. And Do you ever add any pollen patties for spring build-up? Well, yeah, if I'm building bees, I do. <laughs> uh, I'm just asking you, if you got a good overwinter colony, do yeah, you? Yeah, but not, not always. Not always? No. No. That's something you got yeah. a visual thing. Yeah, know? but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. rearing queens, too. And exactly. I gotta, sometimes i got to hurry things up. And yeah, and that's, what, but that's the point that I'm trying to get here now. Now that we've got the bees through the winter, and now that we're stimulating by feeding pollen patties, and we're building up this nice strong hive, what are we gonna to have to do this hive now? We're gonna to have to manage it, or what's gonna happen? Swarm. They're gonna swarm. So you give this hive all this help, and you made it so healthy, and you build it up, then you better have a plan what you're gonna do with it. I mean, you're either gonna to have to keep adding supers 
or you're going to have to take away from it some bees and some brood and start your own nuke. Or <laughs> if you got a weaker hive down here, you know, part of what I do once I get through winter, you know, I have my spring, I manage them. It's nice to have more than one hive because then you can see comparison what one's doing over the other if you have a problem. But what I do is, if I got this buster, and I built this to be a buster, I wanted bees from it. I wanted to make a split to replace the dead one that I had that sat beside my hive. I, so I built it this way, so I'm going to split it. Or I'm going to take that brood and move it to a weaker colony that I know is healthy. It's got a good queen. I'm going to take the swarm out of it with this brood, and I'm going to give it to the weaker one to give that one a chance to be productive. Okay? So if we're taking care of these and we're, we're building them and feeding them, you got to know what you're going to do with it. Now, other things that you can use in uh, uh, wintering assistance is you've heard of people that wrap hives, right? Mm -hmm. I've done it. I mean, you're not, where you're at here, you don't need to wrap hives, okay? You don't need to. You need to have stocks that are northern bred stocks that don't need any wrapping. You get north, clear north and northern Indiana and on up in there, there may be a possibility. So you don't need to wrap. But what you could do is provide a windbreak from the north and the west. That is a good thing. And you can do that with anything. You know, you got something that, a camper, you know, well, park it out there on the other side of the bees and it'll be the windbreak. But you can, you can offer a windbreak. And um, the only other thing that I do, and we're talking about this inner cover, is I have what I call an insulation board. And it was called blackboard. Uh, I mean, it's just an insulation board. I mean, it said Fire cell board. Cell text. It was kind of black on one side and kind of old school. Tan. Yeah, it's old stuff. Yeah. I mean, and I got a bunch of them. What I would do with that, because we got we got to think about ventilation in the hive. I don't know how much ventilation a hive needs in the winter. Oh, I can tell you. How much? I got a prime example of it. Okay. I had a hive last year, had a bunch of holes, corners were tore out of it, and uh -huh. a swarm of flew in there, and I thought, the heck with you, I ain't gonna mess with you, I'll just leave it alone. It's my strongest hive I had, and okay. you got some of the strain out of that. Okay, so <laughs> a little bit of holes in your equipment, that don't mean nothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you don't want them sealed up completely tight. You know, my entrance Holes going, that big in a corner. Yeah. Uh, because so that cold boxes. air, they can handle. But what I do is I cut a, a piece of board, an insulation, and you could use any kind of insulation that bees wouldn't eat. And I cut it the same size as the inner cover. And that stuff, I would just cut a V in it. Okay? And then that hole in the top of the inner cover, I might leave it halfway open or all the way open. I don't know. But I set that insulation board underneath the telescoping lid on top of the inner cover. And then what that provided me was a little bit of ventilation. And then when I set that on there and I, and I buttoned it up for the winter, the telescoping lid go on, I push it forward because there's a little bit of gas. So what this provides to hold the heat in, and you know what? You leave it there all the time. Because that's another thing you want to remember as a beekeeper. You want some of your stuff to stay there. You don't want to have to carry it to the truck or the car or put it in the garage. This stuff stays on the hive because you know what that does in the summertime? Keeps it cool. It, it keeps the heat that's pounding on the top of it going down into the hive. So they got to carry more water when they could be carrying more honey. So, and you know what else that does? If your lids push forward, it gives you ventilation. But what else is that? That is a top interest. If you get two foot of snow and the snow's all the way up around your hive, or if a tree falls down and you're in Florida, John, on vac winter vacation like you do every year, you leave your poor bees up there. I'm just teasing. If something would fall in front of that entrance or a mouse chewed to try to get in and got caught, it gives you an upper entrance. So if all this, you, the bees could fly out. 
if they've moved up into that colony over winter and they get a calm day on January that it's 40 degrees, the sun is shining bright, the wind's right. not blowing, they can fly out and go to the bathroom and come back in. So it gives you a top end. How many of you guys did that? Yours lived, didn't it? Yeah, I, gotta, I, I just made handy boards. And, and I, from one of the companies, I forget which, you could get a, an insulating board. Mm -hmm. And it has like a tunnel that goes from a notch in the upper cover and tunnels right down to the bottom of the and handy they, they could fly in and out. Yeah, they? and they're doing that now. Yeah. But your bees, your bees lived through last winter, Well, right? no. This, this is a new <laughs> colony I've got. Oh, this year. Yeah. Did you have the same thing on last year? No. Okay. Last, well, we year, know. last year, I made the mistake of buying packaged bees that I found out later were shipped from California. Well, it's not... It, that, that was a terrible that's mistake. Not, well, Damn, that's man. not necessarily a... I'm not 100% sold on that, what he said. You can get packaged bees. It's the queen you have to replace. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't do that. But I don't care. Well, last she, winter. She's laying good. Last winter. But, but they didn't make it through the summer even. Oh, it lasted oh, maybe that three weeks after I got yeah, it. That's, that's what that I'm saying. Yeah, that was the queen. Yeah. 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 I, I put an insulating board, one of those green ones on the top, and then down the sides too. Okay. And then, that's, that's still left room. And I did it on two hives. One made it through. The other was a very small. Comment. You just put it on the outside. The outside yeah. But it wasn't all sealed up. You just no, I didn't it on there. There was plenty of ventilation. Yeah, yeah. plenty of ventilation. It's just something else to help on the wind break and keep the cold against the yeah. yeah. When you're I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying you don't have to. Yeah. But what I found, because I used to wrap them with tar paper. Okay. You've done that, and I've put insulation on there, and it helped them. But what I found too that they start brooding early. They go too, go too soon. They yeah. go too soon, and then they start consuming more stores earlier than right. what the weather's telling them. And then they also build quicker, and then cause a swarm in the 15th of April instead of the 1st of May. Right. You know, so. That insulation board. Mm -hmm. The V in it mm -hmm. is for what? Ventilation. But that's on your. Inner cover, right? Are you saying is I lay that insulation board on top of the inner cover? Okay. Okay. Okay, so it's not fitting down. It's not fitting down inside. The lip. No. It's, okay. it's the same size, the same diameter as your inner cover. And your inner cover's all got a lip. So there's an airspace. Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell you, you can go out to hives in the middle of winter and then if you have a problem feeding like dry sugar or something, the bees is going to hold in enough heat that they can get up there and get right. into a candy board or get into dry sugar if, if, it, if that's up there. Because I go to my hives and pop the lid off, if it doesn't have an insulation board, there's no bee in sight. Mm -hmm. But if you take one of them and pop that insulation, I mean, they're up there and they're just happy as could be because they're hanging out in the break room. They're not down in there where they have to work. How many of you keep a record of your hives? That's good. That's a smart thing to do. He he does it in his head. I don't know how he does it, but I write some things down. This is a little cheat sheet you can use. I found it on the internet. This is what I use on my hives. You put a little note in there. I'll pass it around. Some of you guys live close to each other. I think Mary's got five or six more of them that no, you can look no. at and use. They're you can in there. Probably just Google search for it. Well, yeah. no. Is that from? I found it. I found it. Long time ago. <laughs> probably still I can go make copies of it if you want. If you guys want copies of it, go ahead and you know use it. <laughs> I teach here. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> That's cool. But I always I think it's a good no, idea yeah. to keep a record of your hives. Go ahead. Oh, I just why did so many people lose all their bees? It's like you're like her son-in-law had sixteen hives every day. Okay, one. we had five. Every one of them. Died. <clears throat> okay, here's why. It's the worst winter that the bees have faced since 1937. Did they run out of food or what? No, it was too cold for too long. Last year there was hide and mite numbers. If your hive didn't dwindle down to just a very few bees and then die, if it did that, you probably had some mite issues. If your hive had food in it, 
and a lot of bees it was just too cold and too long because bees need cleansing flight. Yeah. They need cleansing flight. And usually in January you have a calm day where we can get a cleansing flight. And if you don't, you can get one in February. We never had any. Okay. February's weather was as cold as January's. So these bees were under stress so much more by they needed cleansing flights and Dr. Uh, Dennis Van Engelstorf, he claims it's kind of like fish, that since the bees were cooped up for so long and didn't have any cleansing flight, that their bodies were forced to go into a reproduction mode, and then they started burning up their energies a lot quicker, and the resources just quit, and, and so perfectly healthy bees died. I mean, in southern Indiana, I have 100 hives. Most of my stocks are all Indiana raised stocks. So everything up, up through here is pretty much the same genetic. In southern Indiana, south of Highway 50, at 100 hives, I lost four due just to winter. I lost a total of eight. Then I come up to Indianapolis. And I get north of Indianapolis, I was losing 30 to 35%. Then I went north of Highway 30, and it was 60%, just because it was cold, cold, cold. My dad said it was the worst winter on bees since 1937, mm -hmm. and in Indiana, and that's, you gotta remember, that's pre my days, that 85% of the bees died in Indiana. Well, like you were talking about eating up towards, all them five hives of ours had honey left in them, but mm -hmm. the bees are all dead. But they had bees in it. It's like they got to a certain point and they couldn't move, or they just, you know, they just fixed them. And that's, that's that was that was winter. I had I had a so bunch died, died, and they were just inches from honey. Inches from food. Nose down in the comb. Yeah, yeah, we had some of that too. Yeah, like they were like they're trying to get that last drop of honey out, but they're so cold they didn't want to move over. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we had some of that too. They spread it out. They did. They did. They kind of spread out. It was crazy. You know, the bees were just under stresses that they not normally faced with, and they did weird things. You know, I mean, I went into winter last year with those bees in northern Indiana with the healthiest big population in food. Of course, they was a little white, but I went up there and do feeding, and I was just devastated when I went up there. Clean that. Yeah. Course, did you notice any? Did you notice any significant difference in the ones that you made? That, you know, prior to the winter, for example. You know, was there something you can think of that might? That reason that hive lived in that yard yeah. and these other yeah. ten died. I don't know because they was pretty much the same age. You know, they was split. And I don't know about that, but I know that they didn't have a lot of mice. Because I monitor, and that's something that we got to do, and that's another class. This isn't bee making. Are we ready for the second breakout? Yeah. Okay. Well, class, I'm sorry that we went over, but if you got any questions, you know, questions is what it's all about. And remember this in beekeeping: once you think you got it figured out and you're doing the right thing, it's going to change because you got to be able to change and adapt with it. But when you find something that works, don't change until it doesn't work anymore. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.